Families have a lot going on. Let Ollie help manage the mental load with new cognitive health supplements for everyone four and up, like delicious Lolly Focus Pops or Lolly Mellow Pops for kids. And for parents, try three new Brainy Chews to help you focus, chill out, or get energized. Find these cognitive health buddies for the whole fam at ollie.com. That's O L L Y.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This is Monday Matinee on the Mutual Audio Network. Come on, let's all go to the lobby. Because people are staring at us listening to these shows while we're in the theater. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. The following program is rated U for universal audiences and is considered suitable for listeners of all ages. This is a presentation from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Welcome once again to Showcase, the anthology series from Dream Realm Enterprises. I am your host, Jeff Niles. This week, we are showcasing a remake of a story originally presented as part of the anthology series The Realm Weaver, which was then titled Breaking the Gloaming. Writer Jonathan Batten Russell was never fully satisfied with that production due to the various sound quality issues. Despite its shortcomings, it was a very successful production, and one of John's favorite scripts, which was based on an idea given to him by Aurora McPherson. John had always hoped to remount the production, and remake it altogether. What you are about to hear is his hope fully realized. Though the original Cats was very successful in their performances, this more recent production of the story sees two different actors taking on the roles of the man and the woman. The title has also changed, reverting to the original working title of Voice in the Dark. The story itself was crafted perfectly for audio, taking place in a pitch-black prison cell somewhere in the third world country. It tells the story of a young man who was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, and who finds himself in an impossible situation. Lost and alone, the young man wonders if he will ever see or hear another living soul ever again. However, he will soon discover that perhaps he isn't alone after all when he hears the chilling sound of a young woman crying somewhere in the darkness. Has he imagined it? Or has he found his salvation at last? Please join us for our first season finale of Showcase, as we present Jonathan Patrick Russell's A Voice in the Dark, Part 1. Imagine if you can being thrown into the deepest, darkest place that you can imagine, left there alone with only darkness and your own thoughts for company. into a deep, dark prison cell. When I say dark, I mean very dark. Pitch black, in fact. The only light to be found was the slightest hint of light that I could sometimes see through the cracks around the door. And even then, I had to sometimes question whether I was actually seeing light or if I was merely imagining it. It was a metal door and locked securely. There was no way out that way. And believe me, I would try on many occasions, but that first night, I couldn't get my head wrapped around escaping at all, and so all I did was whimper and cry. 
the disbelief of what was happening paralyzed me. I didn't do it! I don't belong here! No! <laughs> I'm innocent! I'm an innocent man, I tell you! I fell asleep that night, repeating those same words over and over again. I had been thrown into what seemed like the darkest pit in the world for a crime I had not committed. My defense had been pathetic. The case against me, though obviously trumped up, was open and shut. That's what happens when you find yourself in trouble in a third world country. You find that you don't matter, that you are no one, that your life is worthless. I had been thrown into the darkest pit in all the world, simply to rot, to fade away, to be forgotten. Time passed. It was difficult to say just how much time, weeks, months, Time had no meaning anymore. My only company was the few rats that somehow found their way into my cell, and I was lucky in that, because now and again, one would get close, and that little fellow would never see the daylight again. Those rats were my only means of food, as I soon learned. My captors had no intention of feeding me or even keeping me alive. I was sent into that dark hole simply to die. But I was determined I wouldn't be that way. I would survive if it killed me. <laughs> As days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months, the loneliness crept in. My one longing was to hear another human voice. One night, as I crouched in the corner of my cell weeping, my prayer was finally answered. <laughs> Had I really heard it? Was it truly someone else crying in that awful place? Yet when I called out, no one answered. Is someone there? Please tell me, are you there? Anyone? Someone? Please? Please answer. No response came. I was alone. I must have imagined it. I heard what I wanted to hear. As the days passed by and the loneliness persisted, my mind wandered all over the place, to my home, to my family growing up, to friends I hadn't seen for so very long. And then my mind began to wander further, to places I had never even been, seeing faces I had never even seen, hearing voices I hadn't even ever heard before. I created my own reality in that darkness, it was the only way I could hold on to my sanity. And then one night, I heard it again. <laughs> Hello? Hello? You must hear me! Hello? Please hear me! No, no! No, no, please! Please keep crying! If you aren't going to speak to me, at, at, at least keep crying. Just so I can hear you. Just so I can hear that uh, uh, I'm, I'm not alone in this godforsaken place. Are, are you in the next cell? Where are you? Tell me, please. I, I beg you. I don't want to be alone. I, I need to know someone else is out there. Has the world died? Am I the only one left or am, am I dead? Is this what it's like to be dead? Just alone in the dark? You are not alone. <laughs> I, I can't believe it! <laughs> yes! I'm not alone! You're there! You're really there! Oh, oh please, L -l -l please, keep talking to me, please. Let me hear you. You are not alone. You have never been alone. <sighs> oh, thank you. Oh, God, thank you. You don't know how much it means to me just to hear another voice, just to know that someone else is out there, or rather, in here, with me. I'm here. I promise. I am with you. Why? Why haven't you spoken before? Oh, oh, hell, that doesn't matter. I'm just happy that you're speaking to me now. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm 
Jesus, Kitty, such a good boy. <laughs> and all I want is to just keep hearing you. Come on, just, just talk to me, please. Just, just tell me something, anything. I, I just want to hear your voice. I just have to know that you're really out there. Oh, I hope you're really out there. Or could I be losing my mind? Am I just imagining you? I'm here. I'm with you. I promise. You're not crazy or anything. You're not alone. <laughs> I just don't believe this is happening. I've been alone in this darkness for so long. You haven't been alone. Maybe I wasn't. I heard you crying once before, but, but I thought I'd imagined it. Maybe you were just afraid to speak to me then. Oh, oh well, it doesn't matter. You're speaking to me now. You're speaking... We're speaking to each other. <laughs> it's just so wonderful. Wow, you think I just found my freedom? I'm so happy right now. But you are free. You just can't see it. What? Oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. How, uh... uh how long have you been in here? Um, where are you from? Just, just tell me something. Anything. I just, I just, I just want to hear you talk to me. Please talk to me. I don't really care what you say. You can tell me the moon is made of green cheese uh, and that the sky is pink. I, I don't mind. <laughs> just as long as you keep talking to me. Why did you think you were alone? Oh, well, um, I've been here for some time now. Must have been weeks already. I hadn't heard anyone before now. And I never heard them bring anyone else into this dark pit. Maybe it was while I was sleeping at some point. But that really doesn't matter. I assumed I was alone. Well, nearly alone. <laughs> the only companionship I've had in here were my little benefactors. <laughs> you mean the rats? Yes, lunch. <laughs> the only thing on the menu. <laughs> uh, all right, well, they're an acquired taste, I'll grant you. But, but when there's nothing else, when, when you've got no choice, when it's... Either eat or die? Yeah! Rat's good food! <laughs> Never thought I'd hear myself say that. Never thought I'd live long enough to say anything to anyone ever again. <laughs> but I was determined to survive. Determined I'd get out of this place someday. And I'm still pretty determined. So far, I've been living by sheer willpower alone. But uh, perhaps that's enough? Perhaps. Because... I believe that's the only reason I'm here now. By sheer force of will. You're obviously a very unique woman, and I'm grateful that you're here, regardless how or why. Are... are you there? Uh, I must have fallen asleep. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe it is time for some sleep. At least I'm not alone anymore. And for that, I'm... Oh. So grateful to you. I fell asleep that night with a newfound comfort, a newfound inner peace. I wasn't alone anymore. It's the one sentence that resonated throughout my being. I wasn't alone. Not anymore. My new companion wasn't always so talkative. In fact, there were days when she wouldn't speak to me at all. And it worried me. I worried I might never hear her voice again. But then... <laughs> it was like music to my ears. She wasn't talking to me, but at least I could hear her. <laughs> oh, you're there! I, I hope I didn't offend you in some way before. Oh, please don't cry. Come on, you're not alone. I I'm here. You can talk to me if you want. Or, or not. It's okay. But just know that you aren't alone in here. I am with you. Do you hear me? You were there for me when I needed someone. Now I'm here for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are not alone. I am here. I, I promise I'm here with you. I know you are. Oh, you're speaking to me again. Oh, I'm so glad to hear your voice. You just can't imagine. I was worried there for a while when, when, you, when you weren't speaking to me. Don't worry. You haven't offended me. Oh, good. I'm pleased. I was really worried about that. But why have you been so quiet? Perhaps. I've become so used to being alone that 
I didn't notice you were there. I can understand that. The mind plays rotten tricks on you in the dark, especially when it's a non-ending darkness such as this. At times, I think my mind plays tricks on me. I can almost swear I can see lights. Just little balls of light, you know, just hovering around the place. It's very strange, but... Well, I guess, I suppose that's to be expected. Maybe. The darkness can be... So oppressive. Yes, that's one word for it. Oppressive. Hey, tell me. Have you ever seen any lights at all from where you are? Once. Yes. You... you did? Yes. It was a bright light, yet faint. And so distant. I wanted to go to it. But something stopped me. I don't know what. And now... I seem to be stuck here. In this oppressive darkness. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're stuck in this dark place with me. It's no place to be. I know if I had the choice, I'd take any cell they put me in as long as there was at least some light, however dim, anything but this darkness. As as I said, it plays tricks on your mind, the dark. Sometimes I think I can see movement like... I don't know, like someone is walking through the wall, but I soon realize no one is there. I'm alone in here. Just one man alone in a tiny cell. You are never alone. You haven't been alone since the day they brought you here. I've been with you the entire time. Of course. I suppose you heard me crying and screaming that first night. I've heard your cries. Every night. I've felt your pain. Every day. I know your suffering as it was mine. We are the same, you and I. No different. Our fate is the same. I'm sorry, but this light you said that you once saw, could you tell me what it was? Where it came from? Could you make out anything about it? Yes. It was welcoming. Inviting warm. I could feel it. Feel? I don't think I can feel anything anymore. The first few weeks all I could feel was the pain from my beatings, the ones they gave me right before they threw me down here. The discomfort from wearing the same clothes, from having no water in which to bathe, the itchiness from growing a beard which I always hated to do. Nothing but discomfort. That's all I felt at first. Hating the taste of raw rat meat, the sickening smell of this cell after I'd been here for a few days. But now... Now all I feel is numb. I feel nothing. I smell nothing. I see nothing. But the one sense I do still have is the ability to hear. I can hear lunch. (laughs) The rats. I can hear my own movements across the damp ground. The water that trickles in here from... From somewhere. I I don't know where, but but thankfully it comes. Thankfully I have moisture to drink. Precious little of it, but I just manage a few drops a day. I suppose that's what keeps me alive. But beyond that, what I hear is you. Your voice is like music to my ears. And it's the most beautiful song I've ever heard. Your voice... Oh, I'm so grateful for your voice. Thank you for that precious gift. Oh, so lovely. Her singing was indeed so very lovely. I couldn't believe my ears... Here I had been talking about the beautiful sound of her voice, and she blessed me with a song, even though hearing her talk had been song enough. But hearing her humming that tune, it was as if Christmas had come. And so I lay there just listening. It was so moving that it reduced me to tears, and soon I drifted off into the most peaceful sleep I'd had in some time.
My new companion turned out to be a true gift, a blessing. I found myself telling her things I'd never told anyone. I've made mistakes in my life. I suppose everyone has. There were so many times since I've been in this hellhole and I wished I told my mother that I loved her, but I never did. Well, not since I was a little boy. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever told anyone those three little words. I love you. Th three, three simple words that mean so very much. I don't know why I held things in. Maybe I thought a man shouldn't have to say such things, that it's in his deeds, not his words, that love is shown. But I know now how wrong I was. So very wrong. Have you ever loved? Truly loved? That's a good question. I've been with women. A number of women, sure, but... But were they more than the fulfillment of your physical desires? Most? No. But one was more than that. But then there's always one, isn't there? One who stands out from the crowd. One who captures not only your attention, but your heart. Maybe even your soul. Who was she? Just someone I grew up with. Someone I went to school with. Someone I loved before I even knew what love was. <laughs> she used to write poetry, you know. Something I had no appreciation for until I heard hers. She was so deep. So thoughtful and caring. So full of life. So sure of herself. Whatever happened to her? She, uh, she died some years back. And she died without knowing you loved her? She knew. At least, I, I think she knew. Surely, she must have known. If ever she looked into your eyes, then yes. I'm sure she knew. Because the eyes are the window to the soul. Or, at least, that's what I was always told. It always felt like the truth. I was going to ask her to marry me. So you did love her? It was never the ability to love that I had problems with. But in saying it. But life is like that, isn't it? You think you're invincible, immortal, that you can live forever, that there will be time to say all the things you intend to say, all the things you feel inside. You think you can keep them inside until... until the right moment. But there's simply no rush. But then you realize just how mortal you are. First you watch your father die, a man you idolized. Then lose your sister to an incurable disease. An evil, wretched parasite of a disease. Then you lose... The woman you love. The one who meant everything to you. Everything. And finally, the woman who gave birth to you. And you soon realize how little time you truly have. You ask yourself the question. Why did I wait so long? Why didn't I just say the simple truth? Why did I hold back? And then you're plucked from your life and thrown into a deep, dark hole, left to rot, left to ponder on uh, all of life's mysteries. And then you realize, now you truly do have all the time in the world, but nothing to do with it. No one around to tell the meaningful things to anymore. Nothing to do but think, ponder, hope, dream and despair despair huh i suppose so well i very nearly did until i heard your voice you've given me hope and i don't even know your name well i i suppose it doesn't matter at least you're here she was quiet for the rest of the night 
Despite the inn I gave her, she either didn't care to tell me her name or just felt the same way I did, that it simply didn't matter. So we remained strangers. No ties, no contacts, just two voices breaking the gloaming. No, names didn't matter. She was there. I wasn't alone. And that was what mattered to me right then at that moment. And nothing else seemed to matter at all. Despite the silence the rest of that night, we did talk more and more often. Our conversations went from one end of the spectrum to the other. They were deep sometimes, but at times, well, at times I felt as if I could get nowhere with her. I so wanted to know her, to understand her, and to understand her pain. <laughs> It's all right, you know. I know it's hard, but you don't have to cry. Unless, uh, unless you just need to. I, I... You cannot help me. No one can help me now. But why not? Why? Why do you cry so often? Can't I comfort you in, in any way? There's no comfort for me. I cry because I don't know what else to do. I cry. Because there's simply no hope at all. I cry because I am alone. You're not alone. I'm here. Look, I know we can't see each other. I know we can't touch each other. But we've got each other. So neither of us are alone. Not as long as we have each other to talk to. Look, I know I'm nothing tangible to you. I'm nothing more than a voice in the dark. But I promise you. I promise you, I am here, and I'm not going anywhere. Yes. Yes, you are. You will leave this place, and soon. What? How can you know that? What if I never escaped this place? What if I just rot away in here? Like me? No, I didn't mean it like that. You're, you're not rotting away in here, I promise you that. I won't let that happen. Look, what if, I don't know, what if I find a way out of here? And what if I take you with me? You can't. I can never leave. If I can get to you, will you come with me? You can't get to me. Are you telling me that if you could go, you wouldn't? <laughs> oh, uh, don't cry, please. I, I didn't mean to upset you. If I could hold you right now, I would, you know. And I would let you. I never wanted to hold someone so much in my entire life. If I could have reached her, I would have held on to her for dear life. It was the first time since I'd been in this dark place that hearing her voice was just not enough. I wanted more. I needed more. I know you don't like answering questions, but please tell me one thing. How long have you been here? I can't answer that. There's simply no way of telling. I understand. You lose track of time in the darkness. I have to wonder myself sometimes just how long it's been since they threw me down here. I know it's been months at least, but sometimes I have to wonder if maybe I've been here for years now. I've been down here so long, I sometimes forget why, or even how it happened. Why are you here? It was stupid, really. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I got into a bar fight, of all things, with some drunkard. Just some stupid word said in anger. God, it was so pointless and silly, and, and then it just got out of hand and before I knew it the whole bar full of people just started fighting just for the hell of it really and the next thing I knew the guy who had started the fight was dead someone had broken a bottle and stabbed him with the sharp end well since it was just mass confusion and I suppose since I was the one foreigner in the establishment they just assumed it was me or else it was just easy to pin it on the stranger what I get for taking a vacation in a third world country where the laws are made up as they go along. Now I'm stuck here. 
in this hellhole. Left to die and rot here. I have no friends on the outside to help me. No one even gives a damn anymore. No one in this country or in my own. I'm just all alone in the world now. So, I suppose I just may as well be left in a hold to rot. Please don't say that. I'm certain someone must care for you. I wish. No. No family. No close friends. Not even a casual girlfriend. So, uh, what about you? Why were you sent here? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you again. You, you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. I suppose I stuck my foot in my mouth. And asked you too much of you. I couldn't say anything more that night. I felt so awful. I wondered how I could be so stupid. How could I set her off like that? Whatever the reason was that she had come to be in this dark hole with me, it must have been something pretty bad. Whatever it was, obviously I wasn't going to hear it that night. And all I could do was wish that I could hold her, comfort her somehow. I only wanted, in some small way, to make it better for her. You have been listening to part one of our two-part season finale of Showcase, A Voice in the Dark, which was written by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and which starred in order of appearance Brian Reed as the young man, and Deborah Adams as the young woman. The incidental music was provided by Kevin McLeod. The post-production editor, sound designer, executive producer, and director was Jonathan Patrick Russell. The series, Dream Realm Showcase, was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the express written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. Thank you for listening. We invite you to visit us on the web at dreamrealmsite.com. And if you'd like to email us with any of your comments or questions, you may do so at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. The copyright to this program is held by Dream Realm Enterprises 2012, all rights reserved. And finally, this has been your host, Jeff Niles for Dream Realm Showcase. Join us next time for the conclusion of this two-part tale. You have been listening to a production of Dream Realm Enterprises. Copyright 2012. All rights reserved. Thank you for listening to Monday Matinee right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Please consider subscribing to other days of the Mutual Feeds, including Tuesday Terrors for Horror, Wednesday Wonders, our science fiction and fantasy magazine, Thursday Thrillers for Action, Adventure, Mystery, and Crime Drama, Friday Follies, our end-of-the-week comedy series, Saturday Story Circle for kids and families alike, and Sunday Showcase, bringing you the very newest in audio releases for the week from our United Artists of Audio, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network, listening and imagining together.